All right, welcome back. This is another video in the Construct 3 uh, brick breaker or uh, breakout game that we're doing. Very simple game, very easy to learn. I'm going to collapse all these groups. We're going to, in this video, add uh, some more logic to our game. But first, I'm going to go to the layout and I am going to create uh, more bricks for us to break. Select our one lonely little brick and I'm going to control click and drag out a copy. And then I want the position of this to be the same X position as our other one, which is 90. And then uh, just 270 looks good. 330 to 270, that's 60 pixels upwards. So I want to subtract 60 from the X value for each copy I make. So I'm going to control click another copy and position. I want this, what would that be? 210. I'm going to control click another copy. Position, come on, X90. Uh, this will be what, 550? Or 550, 150. Oh my goodness. There we go. Uh, control click, drag out another copy. Let's make this, that will be, what would that be, 90? Is that right? Yeah. And then let's do one more. Control click out, drag out a copy, and that is going to be 30. So now I can, uh oh, uh, actually that's a good point to make. Let's go over to our layers, click on the background layer, and lock. Should have done that in the very beginning, but I didn't. I'm going to go ahead and select the game layer again. Come back over to my projects panel, and I'm going to draw a box around all these blocks that we created. And I'm going to control click and drag out a copy. And our position is going to be, uh, I want my X position to be right in the middle, and that's going to be 240. And then I'm going to uh, do the same thing highlight them all. I'm going to control click and I'm holding shift down too so that uh, keeps the uh, the y y value the same for for all the objects that we have uh, selected. So all I have to change is the X position which is going to be uh, 390. These are all evenly spaced out uh, both uh, X value and Y value. And that is, uh, that is 18 total. So what I'm going to do, come over here to event sheet. And under initialize, I'm going to say block total. I'm going to double click that and I'm just going to change this to 18. And then I'm going to add an event. I'm going to uh, show you a little bit of, uh, we're going to create our own debug. Uh, I'm going to go to, actually, we need to create it first. Go back to our layout, double click. Let's choose text, click anywhere. I'm going to rename this to debug underscore block uh, count. Name it whatever you want. Uh, color white so that I can see it. And uh, that looks good. I'm just going to say, well, we don't need to change that at all. I'm going to slide this somewhere down here in the bottom. This is not going to stay here. This is just to reference for right now. Let's come over here to event sheet. Say add event. Uh, system. Type in every. And we want every tick. So every tick is every frame that the game is playing. Uh, typically, uh, most games now play at 60 frames per second. That's what we have going on here. So. 60 times every second the game is going to check uh, this line of code and that line of code is going to be debug clock count or uh, I'm sorry block count uh, we're going to set text and in between the parentheses this is what we want to show up and I'm going to just say uh, block count colon space and then on the other side of the quote, uh, the end quote, ampersand and the variable that we want it to read, which is going to be block total. 
we have under our gameplay, what's happening here is when the game starts, we have 18 blocks. We have 18 blocks set up. And we set our variable to 18. So every time a block is destroyed, we subtract one from the block total. And this piece of text is going to read out whatever that variable count is. So let's play this. You can see our block count is 18. That's what we set it to. Let's go ahead and push play. And each time that we destroy a block, it subtracts one. And you can see it 16, 15. And it will do that all the way until there are no more blocks left and it would equal zero. That works. I go ahead and save that. All right, so that works, but what if we wanted to add more blocks? So before we are setting the variable to 18, subtracting one and then reading out uh, the result. But let's say we pick uh, just, what is that, two of them, and drag out a copy. Now I have 20, but when I play, it's still reading 18 because we directly set the variable. And it's not actually counting the blocks, it's counting from the number we set in the variable. So I'm going to undo that. Uh, so instead of setting this to 18, I'm going to go in here and set this to 0. And then I'm going to create another event inside the initialize group. I'm going to add an event, system on start of layout. So on the start of layout, we already have one here, but I, I want this one to be separate because I want it to do different things. I want uh, another condition, so double click on that event go to system, type in four, and what we want is a four, uh, for each. And for each blue block that exists, so we're saying for each time the blue block exists, I want to add an action system and add, add to block total one. See, down here we said set the text to the uh, value of block total and up here we set block total to zero but with this loop when we play it counts to 18 and to show you it still uh, uh, subtracts from the total uh, oh, let's try this now without changing any code I'm just going to copy let's say those six and I'm gonna control click and drag out a copy now I have, uh, what is that, 24? So I still have block total set to zero, and I haven't changed any code. And last time it said 18. Now when we play it, it counts the blocks for us. So no matter what we do in the level, it will always count how many blocks, and we can play and destroy those blocks. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And I think I'm going to stop this video there, and we will pick up in the next one. Don't forget to save.